good night and welcome everyone welcome to another presentation from the advent band ministry and um <coughs> first i want to just thank god for his goodness and for his mercy you know safely through another week god has brought us on our way so let us now a blessing seek waiting in his courts today day of all the week the best an emblem of eternal rest right um morning by morning day by day new mercies we see from god god is so good and he's so merciful towards us so i just want to say thanks to him for sparing my life sparing our lives to see another sabbath day it's not anything we should have we should take for granted because it's not anything that we have done while we are alive it's just because of god's goodness towards us because there are many people who were alive last week at this time some were not even ill suffering from any form of um, you know disease or anything like that and they're not with us today you know some would have made their probably would have made their calling an election sure before their death and some would have not made their calling an election sure before their death but anyway, but anyway you know we are still on the side of the living so we just want to give god thanks for his goodness and for you know his mercies as you all know that i am ricardo latouche and i'm your host here at the advent band ministry now last week we started last week we started this series entitled tell the world right tell the world the inspiring story of the Seventh-day Adventist Church how the Seventh-day Adventist Church started because you know we have heard you know I've, he I've heard so many non Seventh-day Adventists attributing the Seventh-day Adventist Church um, beginning to Ellen G. White and even some Seventh-day Adventists believe that when we when even in the church when we say Sister White says you know they believe that we are worshiping Ellen G. White and uh, I think that is because you know we do not appreciate the history of the church and um, some time ago some I think in 2016 I saw this video for the first time and I also went and I got myself a, a copy of the DVD even though I didn't have to because it's on YouTube but I just wanted to I think it cost me $4.50 or something like that for the DVD I don't remember but the thing is that it's not what I paid for it but this the information that I got from these from this um, video is so important to me that it doesn't matter four dollar fifty or even four million five hundred thousand would still not have been enough to show my gratitude towards you know the Seventh Avenue Church Hope Channel and all those people you know who spent you know timeless hours to to put you know to prepare this true life inspiring story of the beginning of the seventh day Adventist church right and um last week so there 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 are six episodes last week friday we had the first one then we had a discussion last so last week we look at um the reluctant preacher and we saw where um this man william miller who was reluctant first he was he was not even a believer in god but he had an experience whilst he was serving in the army men were dying around him shells were exploding and nothing was happening to him and he thought that it had to be some divine intervention why nothing happened to him and that subsequently led him to, to study the chapter of Daniel Daniel chapter 8 and others right, he studied others but he spent time in Daniel chapter 8 until 2,300 days shall his time shall be cleansed and we saw that that was a fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelation chapter 10 that says that um, the angel gave John a book that was now open and only one book in the Bible was closed and that is Daniel and I think Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4 tells us that you know he said oh Daniel close up this book right because in the last days in the knowledge is going to increase many shall be running to and fro so in the last days men will have more 
will have a better understanding of what you know you have seen and have written so so we saw the fulfillment of that of that and then he successfully cal successfully calculated date from um, the beginning from 47 BC to 1843 the 2,200 days and um, but even though he got it you know he wasn't willing he was reluctant to go and preach the message and um, his wife was there encouraging him and after a while he made a promise that he's he didn't have the guts to go and ask to preach but if God sends someone to him and ask him to preach you know he will preach the message not knowing that at the time he was making that statement a guy who lived five miles five hours away or something like that was on his way to him to invite him to preach that Sunday because you know they were not they were not Sabbath keepers and that is important to note uh, that um you know the our founding pi the, these pioneers were not Sabbath Sabbath keeper because this even though when we talk about you know the first angel's message and it has elements of the fourth commandment in it for in six days you know the Lord made heaven and the earth and he sent the fountains of waters and also in the, the first angel's message it says and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters so we see a parallel there but we must remember that the, the first angel's message or the three messages are symbolic so even though they will have a parallel with the fourth commandment we should not narrow them down to say okay they were calling back people to sabbath worship because sabbath keeping did not come until you know and we'll see that in a few episodes from now so last week when we look at episode one they were not keeping the sabbath you know they were sunday they were sunday worshipers so um so when he made a promise to god that you know he would preach he went home and then with a few hours after the gentle the, the young man came and said you know pastor will be out so my parents you know will know if you'd like to come and preach and then he realized that you know he made a promise to god and he, you know he went and then the people embraced his message and one one such man was joshua v Hines, you know and um it ended there so we're going to look at um part two tonight but before we do so let us offer a word of prayer right let's pray first before we start it start to look at episode two episode two which is entitled um the coming jesus is coming and then we'll be looking at the first angel's message and probably second angel's message to see you know so we can literally apply them because th there are many send adventists who who i believe are yet to fully understand the literal fulfillment of the first second and third angels messages you know we know them you know we can say them verbatim you know from um revelation chapter 14 verse 6 to 12 we know them some people can even say them probably you know in reverse order the, the third message then the second message and the, the first message and the fourth one we know them but if you ask them you know how was this message literally fulfilled when was it fulfilled and um, you know some of us might struggle but when we watch these clips and we read it along with the bible and the spirit of prophecy we can have a better understanding of when exactly the first second and third angels message were, were fulfilled and how were they fulfilled what happened back in 18 in 1844 that caused those messages to be fulfilled you know and um was the first message about sabbath or was it something else you know what was what was the proclamation that fulfilled the first angel's message and also we look at the mean things like the midnight cry because even today you're still uh, you know you, i'm still hearing seven adventists saying things like you know at the midnight cry you know we'll be going home you know at the midnight cry we'll be going home but the midnight cry proclamation was also made in 1844 and um we might look back look at that also at that at the, at the, at the end of the um the clip so let us pray father which will thank you for your goodness and for your mercies thank you for sparing our lives over the past six days of toil and labor father as we're about to look at this this clip dear father episode two of the message that we should tell the world as seventh adventists to show them that our church is fully rooted and grounded in the in the scripture and there's no other church in this world none other 
that can truly say that their roots began in the Bible. In Revelation chapter 10, 12, 14, in Daniel 8, in Daniel 9, Daniel 12, dear Father, you are showing this world that there's only one true remnant church, and that is the Seventh-day Adventist church as under the leadership of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Father, help us as, as we listen to these clips, dear Father, that we may realize that, as Ellen White says, that we have nothing to fear for our future unless we shall forget where you, the Lord, has led us in our past history. Have mercy upon us again, we ask. Give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us understanding. In Jesus' most holy and precious name I pray. Amen. To God be the glory. I am just an old farmer, but the scriptures have become my delight. The insights from the book of Daniel and Revelation that we discuss today are the fruits of many years of my own study. And yet I think it is important for you to know that I am not alone in my convictions. Many others across this country now believe in these very truths. Our message is the same, for it is plain in the pages of God's word for all to read. And it is delivered with urgency because, my dear friends, the time till Christ's return is very short. Yet focus not on a simple day or hour, for while these are near, so is Christ. Know him first. Seek him first. Let us love one another, for love is from God. And those who love were born of God, and know God. God shall wipe away all tears. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for those things are passed away. Ellen, you must go to bed. Father, just a few moments more. You need your rest, my dear. Come, Ellen. Let's pray. Tomorrow you will be stronger. Every morning before I open my eyes, I pray that this will be the day that I will forget about the accident. I see the morning light and it all returns. I promise you, my dear, our Heavenly Father has not forgotten you. I long for the day of what Father Miller spoke of in church. No more pain. I've never heard Jesus described as a healer before. I've heard of his wrath and his judgment, but I've never... His healing, so beautiful. <laughs> I miss the old Miller. His eyes are filled with heaven now. 
again, his mouth won't stop speaking about it. He doesn't drink anymore. Which I suppose leaves more for all of us. Who would have thought a country farmer would become a justice of the peace and then start a religious revolution? Barnaby Larson's just returned from Britain, and he says that this doomsday idea is on every tongue in England, and it's spreading throughout Europe. You don't say. Tis true. This notion of a second coming is heard as far away as Africa and India. Yes, and the alchemists thought they could turn iron into gold. Ah, just because there are believers does not make it so. Thousand eight hundred and forty three years after Christ, when the vision shall be fulfilled. As persuasive as you were today, our reach is not far enough. Joshua, you have the enthusiasm of a young man. It is both invigorating and irritating all at once. Inquiries pour in from every city up and down the eastern seaboard. I mean, you could preach in every church from here to the Florida Territory. Please bury me in Lowhampton next to my maple grove. Twice a day, still it would not fill the need. And see to it that my wife is provided for until the day of judgment. Well, the next step is expansion through the printed word. Publication will reach not just one set of ears, but countless eyes per page. Well, we shall amplify your voice. And do not say, but I am a simple farmer. But I am a simple farmer. Who asked for help? Well, I had no idea it would be like this. The papers have heaped abuse of every sort upon your labors. Now we shall answer back, but on our own terms. I'm a tired old man. And I'm the owner of a printing press. about father's message. Let me see. Pride goeth before the fall. We must not let our heads swell with our own self-importance. Are those words from the Bible? Those are words from your mother. And unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mr. Miller and those who listen to him suffer from a grand delusion. They claim that Jesus will return by a certain date. Yes, it's not the first time the end of the world has been prophesied by a fool, nor will it be the last. I fear, if the date passes, that a shout of infidelity will arise from the unbelievers and lead many of you astray. You see, the world is not going to end in a few short but it will end. And when it does, are you prepared, sinner? Will you stand before the wrath of a holy God as he looks upon the deeds behind which you cower and shout, depart from me, ye that works iniquity? Then shall the hellfire lap at the heels of those who turned away because of Miller's ideas. Oh, so much hotter the flames will be. The 
please forgive my iniquities against your name and rescue me from the evil one. Have mercy. Have mercy upon my wretched soul. Please forgive my iniquities against your name and rescue me from the evil one. Stay to me, true be saved. Ellen, my darling. What is it? What's the matter? What if I have been led astray, Mother? Why would you say that? I am so afraid. Mother, the preacher said such bad things about Father Miller. Don't you listen to any of that. But I heard. We all did. We were in a house of worship. There was no comfort there. Mother says that you were quite distraught last night. I was taken with such fear. Brother Stockman, I know that you believe in Father Miller's teachings. Indeed, I do. As do many other Methodist ministers. When Father Miller shares the Advent hope. His urgency is tempered with love, yet now all I can hear are the ministers who speak of burning in hell forever. What hope is there for me, for any of us, if our Heavenly Father is a tyrant who delights in eternal torment? The very agony of your mind is indication of God's Holy Spirit at work in your heart. Our God does not rejoice in your destruction, nor is it his nature to condemn but to seek that which is lost. How can I be so sure? Go free, Helen. Go free, trust in Jesus, for he will not turn his back on any true seeker. Thank you, Brother Stockley. Do not thank me, Ellen. Thank the Lord Jesus. And share the Advent message with others. Elder Himes and Father Miller have announced a conference in Boston. Does Elder Himes know that Papa's sick? We sent him a letter. Greetings, friends! He cannot travel, Joshua. He cannot travel. No, 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 of course not. Typhoid is serious. It's very serious. I know you have both put great effort into this occasion. It's the first time we will all be together in the same place with common purpose. Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, all understanding the Advent is near. So you shall meet them, and then you will return and tell William all about the conference. I would like to see him, just to give him a word of encouragement. Yeah. Well, hello, dear friend. How are you feeling today? Uh, not much better, I'm afraid. Well, then I shall leave you to Alone, for a little while. Hey, Joshua, only a few moments. He's not up to visitors. Of course, absolutely. Are you certain that you cannot ride in the carriage? I can make a marvelous bed for you in the back thick with blankets no. and the fresh air would... No, At Josh. the conference, people could come to you. I was thinking we could arrange an area. No. Joshua, this is bigger than one man. This is God's power. Hundreds of pastors have awakened. You do not need me there. Yes. Of course. You're right. It will be in my prayers. Are you 
absolutely certain. Go. Go now. <coughs> Joseph Bates, as I live and breathe. How long has it been? Too long, Brother Hines, too long. <laughs> well, I have heard much of your work on temperance with the Christian connection, but you have made quite the name for yourself speaking on the evils of slavery as well. Am I but a humble servant, Joshua? God speaks and I obey. Ah, nonetheless, your reputation is well deserved. Is it true? Brother Miller could not make it? Yes, uh, typhoid fever. It, it is more than a shame. Oh, Brother Bates, may I introduce you to Hiram Edson? Uh, you may know uh, Brother Edson through Pastor Finney. Oh, yes. Brother Finney's work on the causes of temperance and abolition are well known. Pleasure to meet you, sir. This is Owen Crozier. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I followed Miller's ideas since I heard him last year in New Bedford. As a sea captain, I've traveled the world, but today I was transported farther than across an ocean. I'm committing myself to the Advent message. I feel the same call. As do I. What is your name, brother? And where are you from? Samuel Snow, sir. I work for the investigator. I live here in Boston. You're not here doing an expose, are you? Uh, no, sir. Now, I will admit, I was a skeptic at first, but I have studied Miller's ideas, and I believe they hold a wonderful truth. Ah! <laughs> the conference is finished, and you let's see the discussion continues. <laughs> I was just telling these good men that I am fully committed. Well, I'm so pleased to hear it. I'll share that with Father Miller when I see him. You may also share that I will put my money into spreading the Advent message. Oh, this is momentous news! <laughs> I mean to stand behind Father Miller and his work. So the conference was a success. It came from Maine, New York City, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. So many ideas were put forth. It was a real exchange of thought and enthusiasm. We have many pledges of financial assistance, and almost immediately we will do it again. Next time you will be a part of it, as will Joseph Bates. Bates, I recall meeting him last year. A tall fellow did not use any tobacco. Struck me as peculiar. Well, that he is, but he's going to be very important to us. We will have the resources now. More cities, more printing. Your words will touch many, many souls. Please, Joshua, remember, it is not our work, it is God's. Mr. Miller and his followers are false. Those who are seduced by his candied tongue have no place in this house of worship. So, you must, in the name of the Lord, renounce these radical ideas. If you do not, you will not be welcome here in this house of worship. You may believe you are casting us out, but Father Miller's understanding of Christ's soon return cannot be ignored. We must follow the word of God over the rule of men. We will not keep this good news quiet. And if that means we must leave, 
then leave we shall. My family feels an unspeakable joy at the hope of Christ's return. We feel love, the love of Jesus. It, it lifts us up, it carries us forward. And it will guide us home. Can they speak to us that way? We must not let one bad apple spoil the bushel. We'll announce their removal from fellowship next Sunday. You'll be an example. Our traditions must be honored. On this holy day of communion, I would leave you with a charge to love the Lord your God with all your heart, to keep all of the commandments of God, and honor Him by keeping His Sabbath holy. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to Him. Oh. Mother, no. If you must, but you're new here. Keep in mind that we are outsiders. Elder Wheeler will be interested in what I have to say. No. He heard what I had to say. He really listened. And will he change his day of worship from Sunday to Saturday, as the commandment suggests? He was impressed by what we shared from the Bible. Meaning? He promised that he'd give the idea much thought, and he'd investigate Morning, the idea Mr. more fully. Hello. And from that statement, you declare victory. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is the Lord's Sabbath. That is just so. Mother, there are those who believe that waiting for the Advent and Judgment Day is mm. of greater importance than which day we worship. Perhaps the day won't matter shortly. I've planted a seed. As a teacher, my dear, you of all people should understand how knowledge grows. <sighs> I'll take a copy, lad. Well, you have to give them credit. I do look very handsome. Why do they insist on making me so fat? So, how many people do you expect? It's the largest tent ever erected on American soil. It's been expanded to seat 6,000, and they are assembling plus more. Giant tents, what next? I'm the last person on Earth who saw this coming. I think you were one of the first. We must be on our way. There is a smaller meeting taking place. I wish to stop there first. But the giant tent, we are expected there. Joshua, the world is filled with expectations now. Not everything follows an exact plan. I told Brother Bates I would join him. But he should be at the big tent, too. Whoa, whoa. I'm looking for Joseph Bates. Do you know where I might find the meeting? It is true. 1843 has now passed. Many of you grow anxious. You ask why our Savior has not returned and want to know when will be our blessed hope. I can only tell you that it is in these times that our faith is tested. When I was the captain of a ship at sea, we didn't throw ourselves into the ocean in anguish during a storm. No, we held fast to the moorings. We called all hands on deck. 
Even now, brothers and sisters, let us not despair. Or redouble our effort. The bridegroom cometh. We do not labor in vain. Yes, we had hoped that by now our blessed day would have come. And yet these final moments are our most precious. Let my brother speak. He comes to us with news. Brother Snow has truth for us from the Lord. Let him come and deliver his message. Our blessed Lord has promised us he will come again to take his people unto himself. Now, when Jesus came the first time, the Gospels tell us the time was fulfilled. What time was fulfilled? Prophetic time. Indeed. Historians confirm that Christ died in the spring of A.D. 31, precisely in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. Now, the Bible shows us that spring is the Passover event. The Day of Atonement comes in autumn. And what did the high priest do on the Day of Atonement? He cleansed the sanctuary. Exactly. Thank you, Brother White. He cleansed the sanctuary. Does it not then follow that he will return to cleanse the sanctuary on that precise Day of Atonement? Yes. Leviticus says the biblical Day of Atonement falls on the 10th day of the seventh month. Brethren, we were wrong to expect Christ's return by the spring. According to the Jewish calendar, the 10th day of the seventh month falls this year on October 27th. We know the date, October 22nd, 1844. He is so certain. And you are not? Setting an exact date is foolish. No, not now, brother. We are not in favor here. Let us hope that God will reveal more in time. <laughs> Dear Brother Himes, after much study and prayer, I see a glory now in the seventh month, which I never saw before. Obey his word and believe. There is no time for delay. Put it not off, I beg of you. No, not for a moment. God's message was never meant to be about a single date. Why was I so weak to endorse one? Look at the movement you have begun. You have won thousands. And to what, Brother Himes, have I won them? Disappointment, despair. Welcome back, welcome back everyone, and thanks to those or a few who have managed to join tonight. Um, so tonight we looked at episode two, and um, the discussion time now is that um, we saw in this, in episode two, Jesus is coming, we saw the fulfillment of the first and the second angel's message. So if you are 70 Adventist and you have watched this clip and you are listening to this discussion, now you should know the literal fulfillment of the first and second angel's message. Next week, we will see, because I remember that this week ended 
with the date of October 22, 1844. And brethren, friends, every time I listen to this thing and, and the date is announced, there's a feeling that comes over me. Uh, it's like it, a feeling of joy, you know, and, and, and uh, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's like I'm so ha happy and like I'm crying and I'm not there. I'm not there. So you cannot Im I cannot imagine what was going through the minds of the people when Samuel Sheffield Snow came up with the date, October 22nd, 1844. So we saw the fulfillment, as I, as I said, of the first angel's message. And I will look at that first, of the first and the second angel's message. And the next week we are going to look at the midnight cry. Because the midnight cry was what was attached to the second angel's message. So the second angel's message we'll look at shortly. And the next week, and I don't want to give it away, next week we'll look at the midnight cry. And how was it was the midnight cry of, of Matthew 25, you know, with the ten virgins that went out, five were wise and five were foolish. And at, and at midnight, there was a call, Behold the bridegroom cometh. So next week we'll look into that m a little more in detail. So I, I hope that after that, you know, this this viewing and di that viewing and discussion, then we shouldn't have Seventh-day Adventists, you know, believing that at the midnight cry we'll be going home, right? Because the the Millerites thought that, or the Adventists, they thought that at the midnight cry they'll be going home, but at the midnight cry was really the beginning, not the end. It was the beginning of the investigative judgment. All right, so. The first angel's message was pro was a proclamation of Christ's second coming. That is it. Yeah, that that that's you know you know I'm not saying that's it in a nutshell. It, that's it. Uh, you know that's the entire thing. But in a nutshell, that's what it is, right? So the first angel's message was a message that was proclaiming the second coming of Christ. It, it was bringing the awareness of the people of the relevance of Christ and His second coming. Because they didn't know that it had to do with investigative judgment. They, they just thought that, you know, J Jesus was coming to cleanse the sanctuary. The sanctuary was going to be cleansed. And they thought the sanctuary cleansing mean the earth to be cleansed from sin. And that meant that Jesus Christ was coming. We also saw that at the time, the pioneers were not um, Sabbath keepers. Right? They were, they, you know, they were in the Sunday churches. What, what else we saw? We saw that the church was not ready for the first angel's message. The church was just not ready. So even though people were going to church Sunday after Sunday, they did not want to hear the message that Jesus Christ soon come. Can you imagine? And the Bible says, you know, as, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the, in, in, the, um, in the time of the coming of the Son of Man. So that is telling me that in the last days, there are going to be people who are in the church who will not entertain the thought of Christ returning? Can you imagine that in the church, not in the world? So the church back then was not ready to receive a message of Christ's second coming because they were not ready to receive him. Some were saying, Ellen White says in the book, um, Story of Redemption, that some were quoting the text that the day and the hour, no man know it, which is true. And also William Miller knew that, and that, that was why he was reluctant at all times to put a specific date. A date. So initially, you know, he was saying it, it would have been in October 1843. Then they realized it should have been 1844. And um, I will look at that in a, you know, in a slide just shortly from now. You know, the difference why it moved from 1843 to 1844 and that why it wasn't some arbitrary thing just, to, just to for Bible fulfillment, right? You know. If we do the mathematics, we you know we will see why it could not have been 1844. He was wrong when he said 1844. It had to be 18. Sorry, he was wrong when he said 1843. It had to be 1844. Right. Um. So the church was not ready for Christ coming, so they rejected the first message, and by rejecting the first message, God rejected the church back then. So um. As I said earlier, that one of one of my favorite quotes from Ellen White is the one that, and I and I learned this from you know, Carlton Knott. He said that um, I read it for myself too, that's why, and that's why I made it my favorite. It says that we have nothing to fear 
for the future unless we shall forget where the Lord has led us in the past history. You understand me? You have nothing to fear. So if we can remember that in 1844, God rejected the Protestant churches. If we remember that, then we wouldn't hear Seventh-day Adventists trying to unite with, you know, with other Sunday churches or other Sabbath-keeping churches to say, you know, you know, let us unite with them because there's, not, there's nothing much different between them than us, just that we go to church on a Saturday and they go on a Sunday. Or let us unite with Andrew Enriquez and other offshoot pastors because, you know, they are preaching the gospel. But no, if you go back to 1844, you understand that if you were not with, the, with, with that group of people, God had rejected them. So when Christ went into the most holy place on the 23rd, 22nd of October, 1844, all who heard the first angel's, messages, first angel's message and rejected that message, they were eternally lost. Because they could not benefit from his ministration in the most holy place. And the same thing is going to happen in the last days. Anyone who rejects the first, second, and third angel's messages, when, when probation closes in heaven, that person would, will be eternally lost. When the Sunday law, and let me go forward um, before that, when the Sunday law is broadcast in America, Every Sabbath, every Seventh-day Adventist probation would have been closed. And anyone else who have heard and, and was convicted, listen to the word I'm using, word. you heard and was convicted, so you're never, you were not a Sabbath keeper, but you, you, you have been to a crusade, you, know, you have heard the Sabbath truth, or you know, you're a Sunday worshiper, and you heard the message over and over, and you're convicted that the Seventh-day Sabbath is to be kept, that you know, the Adventist church, we have the truth. But it was not convenient for you, so you rejected it. Your probation would also be closed. Right? So God rejected the church back then, and it's going to reject, you know, the people back then who rejected the first message. And also in the future, it's going to reject those, you know, who, are, who have rejected the first, second, and third angels' messages. And my brothers and sisters, it is important that, you know, we tell our loved ones, our friends, you know, that our families, that it is time, it is high time. Now is our salvation nearer than we first believed. If you have heard the first, second, and third in these messages, if you, have be, if you know that the Sabbath is God's day, if you know that pork is not to be eaten, if you know that homosexuality is a sin, if you know that, if you are convicted of these things, even if you don't believe, the key fact is that you have been shown the evidence that there is a God. Whenever the Sunday law is passed in America, you, and if you continue to reject the light, your probation would have been closed, just like those men in 1844. Right? So God rejected them. And um, the main purpose, Ellen White says, uh, says of the first message was to the main purpose of the first message was to um, separate the, 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 the Adventists from the, from the rest of the churches. So it was to separate the remnant church or start the separation of the remnant church from the Protestant churches. Right? So again, we see that as Seventh-day Adventists, we cannot unite. So even though when we see sermons from Andrew Henriquez from Save to Serve Church saying that Adventists unite with, 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 with Pope and Adventists this and Adventists is that, we know that he's lying, you know. He, he is speaking a, 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 a message that came from the mind of Satan because God does not tell lie. All lies originate in the mind of Satan. All truth originated in the mind of God and all lies in the mind of Satan. So if Andrew Enriquez is preaching that the Adventist church is uniting with any other church, you know that he's preaching a message that's from the devil. All right? And it doesn't matter how much LNG White he opens and quotes, you know, the same Bible that he reads from and the same LNG White that he quotes are the same books that are condemning him, you know, to hellfire if he doesn't change before the Sunday law is broadcast in America. Right? Um, we saw the eagerness of, of the people to preach the message. All right? And if you remember in, in Revelation chapter 10, the Bible says that John, that the angel, which is Christ, gave John 
a book which was now open, which is Daniel, the book of Daniel. And he told him that, you know, when he eat the book, he's going to be sweet in his mouth. So this week we're looking at the sweet in his mouth. Probably next week we'll look at the, what the bitter, in his, the bitter in the belly means. But you saw, and uh, next week too, we w um, I think we'll see. Next week topic, uh, I don't remember next week topic is going to be. Um, disappointment, right? So next week we're going to see the bitterness in the belly. And also the proclamation of the of the the um, the midnight cry, the only bridegroom cometh. So I don't want to give away too much, All right? But the sweetness in the mouth had to uh, as, uh, it, it had to do with what is going to happen next week, more of uh, next week, when the, when when after um after Williams Sheffield Snow gave them the date of October twenty second, eighteen forty four, right? They were so overjoyed. They were so happy that those who, who really wanted Christ to come. So they did everything. They sold what they had. Joseph Bates, you know, he sold everything. Others, you know, the pioneers, they sold everything they had. And they went and they preached the message. This again is going to happen in the last days. Where Ellen White says, some of us will be called upon to sell our properties. And the money will be used for the further runs of the gospel. So we should not be watching the, the tithe in, in the conference and come to church and say, you know, how, many, how much millions of dollars, you know, is in the tithe, you know. Tithe money, this conference has to invest and, and, you know, they are going to want. You know, we cannot reason like that. Because the devil, if, if we start to reason like that, the devil is sowing a seed. So if God, so when God calls upon us to part with our properties and donate the proceeds to the church, we would ha already have a seed sown that hey no 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 not me not my money when the conference have it when the conference has millions of dollars in investment you know my brothers and sisters let us not watch god's money that the conference you know has been mandated by by guideline from heaven how to manage it right let us not watch their money but a time is going to come when we will have to sell our properties not everyone she says but you know, those who will sell will know and to use the money for the furtherance of the gospel. Um, we saw the second angel's message also being fulfilled in this episode. Right? And how? The, the second angel's message says that Babylon is falling, is falling, right? And they follow the angel and they follow the angel saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. Um, because she has um, made all uh, because she has made all nations drunk of the wine. I don't want to mix up with the, with the fourth angel's message. Where's it says, um, yeah, because she has made all nations drunk. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's in the, the, the second angel's message, too, right? So it's saying Babylon is falling, is falling because she has made all nations drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, this message again, you know, it's, it is symbolic. You know, it's using symbols. But what it literally meant was that. The, the, the pioneers or, or the Adventists in 1844 they saw they realized that the um they realized that the church the church had rejected the church had rejected the first message and by rejecting the first message because even though they had incorrectly believed that God was going to come on the 22nd of October 1844. But, but the brethren who were, who were rejecting the message was not bringing anything from the Bible to reject it, right? Some were saying, yes, the day and the hour, no man know it. William Miller, too, was saying that, and, and, and why he was reluctant, as I was saying earlier, and I didn't finish here. He also, he also was reluctant in putting a date because he knew that the Bible said that, the day and the hour. But when he read the Bible and looked at what Sheffield Snow had said, he realized that something had to happen. So he let go of, you know, believing that the day and the hour no man know it because he knew that something had to happen on the 22nd of October, 1844. And he believed too that it was Christ's second coming. But it was, you know, it was something that was going to happen in heaven, the beginning of the investigative judgment in heaven, right? So um, when um, they, 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 they rejected the message, they turned on the, the believers, the Advent believers, and they were some were they had to leave the church. Some were forced to leave, 
some left voluntarily some you know were excommunicated and um by doing that NOI says that um you know the the, the, the Adventists realized that the church back then was no longer the pillar and ground of truth so they left and by them leaving the church whether forcefully or, 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 or voluntarily that was the fulfillment of the second angel's message right so the second angel's message was also fulfilled in 1844 and it was fulfilled when the 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 the, the Adventists leave left th these protestant churches and went off in their own groups because they realized that the church was no longer holding to bible truth they were holding on to traditions right so we saw the first message fulfilled literally and we know exactly what it should be now right and the second angel's message right um let's quickly go we saw some pioneers you know being mentioned you know um i think one of those crews here we saw hiram hetson Hiram Edson, you know, was the man who pioneered, who championed for the Santor message. We saw Rachel Oak Preston. Rachel Oak Preston is like the um, the Rosa Parks of the Black movement, Bla you know, the Black people movement. Who didn't people say she sat so Martin Luther could walk, so Barack Obama could run, right? Well, she championed for the Sabbath movement because she was convicted that the Sabbath should be kept, and from in 1843, you know, she started, you know she started to you know as, you, as she call it she started to sow sow seed in the mind of her pastor elder willa so that you know he could see from the bible that the sabbath is not was not sunday but it was a seven day sabbath and he's just saying uh, saying that if we're going to keep the all the commandments if then we should keep the seven day sabbath and not sunday right so if it w so if it wasn't for rosa parks we wouldn't have Sabbath keeping among Seventh Adventists today. So we, you know, we have to thank God for Rosa, P uh, Rosa Parks. Please forgive me. I mean Rachel Oaks Preston. Rosa Parks has to do with the Black Civil Rights Movement. Um, we also saw Joseph Bates. I know that Joseph Bates was the one who championed now for the Sabbath message. So after he got it, um, after um, Rachel went to her past, I think it was it was Elder Wheeler or. or or FM Pebble, something like that, uh, the guy, the, um, I don't remember the pastor's name. Then he wrote an article that went to William, uh, went to Joseph Bates, Joseph Bates read it, and um, like what he saw from the Bible, believe it, and then he went and he studied with them and he realized that, you know, yes, the Sabbath was to be kept. He accepted the Sabbath message and then he went and he, he did some extensive research. So some of the, so some of the very doctrine that we hold today were done by these men. Here, um, Joseph Bates, James White, because we saw James White being introduced, you know, and, 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 um, and these guys, right? And I think it's important that, you know, we, we remember these, these people. And um, Samuel S Sheffield Snow, he was the man who, who, who calculated the date to be October 22nd, 1844. Now, you just want to look at, um, at this slide here. Um, the day year pro in prophecy. How could they come up with 1843 at first and then 1844 after? Is it, is, were they just using the Bible to, 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 um, to, to justify their stance? No. And let's look. Now, we know, um, say, we're looking at, say, 15 year span, right? A 15 year span. And this 15 year span will, will be covering. 2,300 days because you know I, I couldn't put 2,300 days here so this 15 years is representing the, the, the 2,300 days right and uh, the top line would be say 1843 and the second line would be 1844 all right so what happened when William Miller first calculated the date remember that BC would be like in its negative so BC is counting down so you have 5 BC, 4 BC, 3 BC, 1 BC. Right? Now, if you're adding, you know, when you're adding, remember when you know when 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 we went to maths in, into math class, I know I wasn't too bad at math, so I don't want to lie and say you no, know, I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't too bad at math. So, but in math class in, on the number line, if you remember the number line, you know, when you're moving from a negative to the positive, you go through zero, right? But when we are calculating, the, um, in the, um, say, year, a year now, we do not use a, a zero. 
So that was where William Miller made, made, made a mistake. So I'll say, for example, at December 31st, 1 BC, we did not have January 1, year, year 0. We had January 1 AD. You understand what I'm saying? So the second line would better show you how it should be. So it should be 5 BC, 4 BC, 3 BC, 2 BC, 1 BC, and then the sixth year would have been 1 AD. Right? So when they took away the zero now, then they ended up with 1844 because there should not have been a zero. So he had incorrectly placed a zero because there was no zero here. At the end of BC, the last day of BC was, you know, uh, when the sun set, was the first day of AD. So uh, um, I, I hope, you know, um, everyone understood what, what I went over just now, right? And um, my last slide for tonight is just a, a this slide, you know, is not mine, as you all can see. Um, let me get this thing off the, if I can get it off on screen display. So I want to get these off, right? So, and um, then I go here. I'm, my, I'm the only operator. Ho hopefully soon I'll get someone to assist me to click. Right, so, so here we have this. This is taken from BibleProphecyTruth.com. I'm, I'm not sure if they're Seventh-day Adventists or not. So you know, we just want to give them, you know, their the, the respect and thanking them for presenting this uh, so we can use it for educational purposes, right? So Bible truth, Bible prophecy truth that come. I'm not sure if they are Seventh-day Adventists or some offshoot ministry. I'm not sure. But there is information on this that, you know, can help us to understand, right? So the prophecy began, began at 457 B.C. That's, that's the only, only um proclamation that was given for the Jews to go back and rebuild Jerusalem. There were, there were three proclamations given, but this was the only one that, the only one where the king told them, you know, to, 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 to build, a, rebuild a government, you know, a, you know, um, things that are consistent with, with, with governing a, a country. No, the Bible says that it would have ended on it would, it would have ended on after 2300 days. Um, then the Bible also tells, tells us that 70 weeks was allotted to, 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 um, to Israel. And at the 69th week, the Messiah would have been anointed. So Christ was baptized in AD 27. Right? So between 457 BC and, um, and 40, 400. Um, 69 weeks would be 69 times uh, 7, which would be 483 weeks, I think it is, right? Years. Christ would have been baptized. And the Bible said in, 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 in Daniel 9, it said that the Messiah would, um, would, you know, would establish covenant for a week, but in the middle of the week, he shall be cut off, right? So Christ was crucified um, two and a half years after he started his ministry. In 1831, in 1834, which 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 would have ended the 70th week, or, or the 490 years that that was offered to Israel, was when they killed Stephen, when they stoned Stephen to death, that brought an end to the Jewish d dispensation. All right, I know it has in the, the you know the Dark Ages night in it, but I'm not going there tonight. Right, and then no, so between 1834. And um, the, the you, you have 1,810 years remaining. And if you add 1,810 years, then you get 1,844. So, that so, so, so it's not a case you know, where, we, you know, where we, we're just arbitrarily coming up with some numbers. If you look, or you can go online and look for this thing for yourself, you can see, just Google it, the, two, the, the 2,200 days prophecy, and um, I, I hope you'll be, you know, be led to the, right you know, to the right place. And um, you know you can see what we believe as Seventh Adventists that you know we're not guessing or arbitrarily coming up with some things, but they are true, true Bible scriptures. Now next week I invite you to join me when we look at Episode Three, the bitter disappointment. Remember last week we look at reluctant preacher. Tonight we looked at the fact that Jesus Christ was coming and um, the fulfillment of the first and the second angel's message, as well as um, we saw the pioneers coming, you know, coming, in, coming to play. 
and we we also saw where the Bible said that you know it was going to be sweet in their mouth, right? In Revelation chapter ten. But next week now we're going to see how it was bitter in their belly. What happened in 1844 that was so bitter, right? So I invite you to 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 join me next week next week at 8:30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and um, let's look at episode three, a bitter disappointment. And then join me for the after discussion where, where, where we can just talk more about, you know, the history of our church. Oh, and, um, and just to add that on the seventh week, that will be sometime in the probably October or November, I plan to um, have a, a trivia question on the, on the history, history and mostly of our history of our church and some current questions you know, and to see how much we know about the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to get about 50 questions, A, B, C, D questions, and true and false, and, you know, name this person, you know, from um, some of the pioneers, what they did, you know, um, how the messages were fulfilled, you know, who calculated the, the, the 1844 date, you know, things like that, the role that James White played, William Miller, you know, Lucy Miller, the, that was um, William Miller's wife, you know, and things like that. And um, you know, if you're impressed and anyone wants a copy, uh, you know, I'll be it's, it's it, will, it will be in PowerPoint. I'll be willing to share the PowerPoint show, you know, so you know it can be used in your church or in your organization. You know, it it will be fun. So that that's so that's going to be the week after we look at at, at part six of the six part series, right? So until then, my friends, may God continue to guide and and, and watch over you. May God continue to bless you. And I, I pray that, you know, our life will be spared, that we can meet here next week again, where we can look at another wonderful presentation in this series, Tell the World, the true inspiring story of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the message that we can take to the world, you know, how we can go to the Bible and open the Bible and prove that indeed, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is God's true remnant church. And we don't have to guess, you know, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to think twice. We can open the Bible and, and we can show people from the Bible that, yes, this is a church, God's true remnant church. The Israel, modern-day Israel, you know, is in the Bible. Revelation chapter 10, 12, 14, and Daniel chapter 8, 9. Daniel 12 tells us that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is God's true church. So until then again, see you next week. May God grant to bless and keep you. And I'll say, you take care. Until then.